Hey guys, what is going on? We're going to be doing another realistic rebuild. We're going to be taking on the 49ers. So let's go ahead and check out the squad here. They're definitely looking pretty good. They're, they're better off than I thought they were. So we're going to have an immediate X factor with George Kittle, young as well. So that's really good to have him already at 90 overall. And he's like 20, low 20s, I would say. Yeah, he's 25. So he's definitely going to be here the whole rebuild. Offensive line is a little tough because Stolly is probably going to retire after the first year or two, which seems like he always does. He's going to be a good tackle wide lasso, but we're, we're going to have to rebuild our O-line 100%. We do have McGlinchkey, though, their draft pick coming into his second year now, and he seems to be good. He's got a star development 83 overall. Uh, Jimmy G, man, I don't know. After that last preseason game, there was a lot of people really off the Jimmy G hype train, but I don't know. That last preseason game was real bad for him. Uh, I still think he's going to do pretty good. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that injury wasn't too bad because he, I mean, I don't know what it was in that last preseason game. He just looked, he didn't look good. He was like one for six in an interception, but we'll see what we can do with him. We're going to have a nice running back backfield, three serviceable backs here. We got McKinnon, Tevin Coleman coming over from Atlanta, and then we also have Matt Breida. I am going to run with Breida as our number one guy. But it's going to be a split backfield with Coleman. Coleman's going to be our third down running back. Because he does have a decent catching ability. And he can run if he has to. But I think Matt Breedy is going to be the long term option. Because he's really young. He's like 22. Scheme fit. He's only a one overall less than Coleman. Receivers are pretty good with Goodwin Pettis. And we're going to have Debo Samuel playing the slot here. Now defensive line is dirty. We got D Ford. Nick Bosa, Buckner, Armstead. Uh, the D-line's so good that Solomon Thomas is going to be a backup here. There's not even a place for him to start currently. We have such a good D-line. So we're not going to really have to worry about that. Really, we don't have to worry about linebackers either. We got Quan Alexander coming over from Tampa. Fred Warner, who proved he can be a middle linebacker pretty decently last year. The only spot we might have to be concerned about is left, but we can probably get that under control. Safeties might be a problem for us. We'll see about that. Colbert has star development, so I definitely want to start him at free safety. Uh, corners, we're going to have Verrett and Richard Sherman here. Witherspoon to play the slot. All in all, I, I like the way we look. I really do. I'm hoping that our D-line can stay together this whole rebuild. D Ford's going to be a little questionable. He's like 27, 28 maybe. So we'll see how bad he starts to regress, but... Yeah, I think we're definitely going to be a playoff caliber team, even year one. So that's what I'm going to set the season goal for. I think we make the playoffs year one, or at least I'm hoping for. Let's go ahead and get to midseason here and see the players we're going to have to resign. So we are back here in the resigning period. Decent amount of players to resign here. So Matt Breida wants to come back. Definitely want him. He's my long-term running back that I want to keep. And I'm going to show you guys why. He's only 24. And his stats are really good. He's got 94 speed, great carrying. Uh, we, hopefully, we can build his pass catching ability up a little bit. Not the worst power back ratings. I mean, he's got a 74 truck, which isn't bad. But he's really going to be more of a juke guy. And I, I think he can last here long term for us. I definitely do. I think he'll be a nice back. So we're going to bring him back. Jason Verrett, I'm tempted to let go because he is 28. So I probably am going to let him go. If he was a little younger, I'd bring him back. Eric Armstead, definitely want to bring him back to pair with DeForest Buckner. And that's probably it. I don't want to bring anybody else back here. So we're just going to bring back Armstead and Matt Breida. So we are looking great here. We did not make the playoffs. Uh, we finished 6-10. Wow. Okay. Didn't expect a 6-10 season to start it off. And we don't have a great cap situation. Definitely don't. It, we almost, like, we have, like, 9 mil left after those resignings. Offensive about 22nd in both. Jimmy G, though, he has a decent season. That's not bad for Jimmy G. 4,000 yards, 25 touchdowns, 7 interceptions, 64% completion rate. I'll take that from him. Uh, rushing the ball here. Matt Breida, we split the field with him and Coleman. And Coleman did work with his carries. Jesus, Matt Breida had 6 fumbles? I don't get that. He is like 90 carrying. And we already re-signed him. That's not good. But he had 900 yards, 11 touchdowns. He's kind of a big play running back, so I'm glad we re-signed him. I am going to try to move Jarek McKinnon, though. We don't need him, really. So we are going to try to move him. We Tevin Coleman, again, he had a decent year with the limited amount of time he got. Debo Samuel, wow. 
Leads the team in yards. He had 53 receptions, 950 yards, 18 yards a reception, six touchdowns, six touchdowns for Goodwin and Kittle as well. 72 and 900 for Goodwin, 69 receptions, 700 yards for Kittle. Good year by our receivers, our main guys. See Samuel, Goodwin, Pettis, and then George Kittle. Both had good years, all of them actually. So I'm pretty excited about that. Tevin Coleman did decent from the receiving of the game. 30 receptions, 300 yards, two touchdowns. I'll take it. So I like where we are there. Sacks-wise, I think we allowed a decent amount. Yeah, we did. Yes, we sure did. We're going to have to address that. I think that's probably what held us back offensively was our O-line. Defensively, I'm not sure what held us back, to be honest here. We have really everything you'd want. 119 tackles by Warner. 118 by Alexander. Great to see them do good together. 95 tackles by Verrett. That's tough. We had to let him go, though. He's 28. Going to be going on 29. So we had to get rid of him. Frank, Cla I mean, D Ford. Wow. He comes in and delivers us 12 sacks his first year here. Eight by Buckner. Six and a half by Thomas. I don't know how he got a whole lot of playing time. Four and a half by Warner. Nick Bosa didn't really get a whole lot. Only two and a half. What did his development end up being? Superstar, I'll take it. I'll take a superstar development guy in Bosa. That's definitely going to help out. I'm not going to lie. I was hoping for an X Factor, but I'll take it. Interceptions, we get two by Verrett, two by Sherman. A couple of one bombs here. Definitely need to work on the interceptions department here. Check out the yearly awards real quick. MVP goes to Mariota somehow. Okay, they finish 8-8. Eight and eight. He wins the MVP. Okay. And we're not in the conversation, unfortunately, here. So that's going to do it for the end of the year. Let's go ahead and see if we have any money to make some moves in free agency. So we pick fairly high here in the draft. We pick seventh overall. I, I know we should go offensive line, but I feel like we're going to need a playmaker or two for Jimmy G. And with Goodwin kind of regressing a bit, I feel like we need to go after receiver. I really do. Yeah, that's kind of tough, though. We do need an offensive lineman. I... I uh, I usually hate going offensive linemen this early, but we might have to. We might have to. That guy's an early second rounder. We don't have a second round pick, unfortunately. So really, if we, if we go with one of these guys, they have to be a clear-cut good offensive lineman. And to be honest, these guys just don't look like it to me. This guy's still an early first round talent. We're going to take a chance. He's going to be a set. Okay. I'll take that. He's a 75 overall with hidden development. That's pretty decent. Decent strength. I was worried about that bench, but he put up decent strength there. Good all-around stats, so I'm okay with that pick there. I wanted to go receiver really bad, but you know what? We have to start building up this offensive line. So I feel like I can still go receiver here. I'm just not sure where to go. We can either go with Colin Johnson or Kendrick Rogers. Both physical guys can make some nasty grabs. I think I'm leaning towards Kendrick Rogers just because of that A-minus release there. That release could be dirty, plus the catch in traffic. We got to roll with him. Kendrick Rogers, 6'3". What is he? 70 overall. Wow. Okay. Definitely a bit lower than I had anticipated here. Oh, that I don't know about that pick. I mean, we needed receiver help, but we needed like an elite guy, and he definitely doesn't look to be that. So we are going to go center here. Center's quite important, as you guys probably hear me say a lot. So we're going to go with this Frederick guy here. So he's got second in the bench reps. That's usually what I look for in the center. The Buccaneers and he's a 69 overall. Okay. Didn't look like the strength did him too great because he has 84. Okay. We're going to have to uh, probably not start him. We, It's kind of bad because I, I really needed to get some good O-linemen this draft. It was kind of unfortunate that we didn't have a second round pick. I really think that would have helped us out. But that is going to do it for the draft here unless I do find a guy later in the rounds. As we are going to be back here at the start of Season 2, let's go ahead and check out our team. So we didn't greatly improve in any position, but we, we were in a really bad cap spot. We couldn't make any signings because we were in such a bad cap spot. So we are going to try to move on from McKinnon 100% because we, he has a pretty big cap hit. Um, Matt Breida is going to be our number one back. I'm going to still do that thing where Matt Breida is our number one back, but Tevin Coleman is going to be the third down back just to split a little bit of carries. Jimmy G is still the starter quarterback. Kittle up there is doing pretty nice. Um, we did lose our left tackle, Stolly, to retirement, which I did think we would. So I think that signing of the left tackle from the draft was pretty good. 
Because if we wouldn't have signed him, we would have been looking pretty beat up on the O-line. But we're not looking too bad. We, we got Tomlinson, who's a who's a decent guard. Not great, but he's okay. And then we have McGlinchkey, who is pretty good at right tackle. Already an 84 overall. I, I'm hoping he gets up to maybe a 90 overall by at least the end of this rebuild. We'll see, though. Defensively, we got a lot of upgrades on the defense and development trade upgrades. So a lot of our guys moved up to superstar. We had Buckner at superstar. Quan Alexander moved up. Nick Bosa did, and so did D Ford. Now, you guys might see Solomon Thomas on linebacker and wonder what I'm doing, but he's not going to get any playing time on D-line when you look at our D-line because we have Bosa, Buckner, Armstead, Ford. So I do want to get him some playing time, and he's not a horrible linebacker. So we're going to start him off the left outside linebacker to pair with Fred Warner and Quan Alexander because he's got 83 speed, which isn't bad for a defensive end. So he can definitely move around. He can make tackles. He's got like 80 tackling. So I'm not worried about him making tackles. So I'm feeling pretty good about our front seven. I would say our only concerns right now on defense are going to be safeties and maybe get another good cornerback to go along with Sherman. I love how the X factors don't regress really badly. That That's definitely a, a good thing where Richard Sherman's like 32, but he's still hanging on to that 91 overall, which is cool. Um, yeah, so that's what we're looking like. Just I, I would say safeties in a corner is what our defense needs. Other than that, we should wreak havoc this year with our defense. Our defense should get after people. Um, I think we make the playoffs this year after a devastating 6-10 and 10 season. I feel like we bounce back in a big way here. Okay, we got some big names to bring back this year. George Kittle definitely is one of those. Richard Sherman, we want to bring him back. I know he's 32, but that X Factor slows regression in a major way. DeForest Buckner, he's got to come back. To be honest, I don't know how important a fullback is in this Madden 20 simulation. I just don't want to pay that much to a fullback, so we're, we're probably going to let him go. We're in a not a great cap situation. So I, I, how much cap do we have currently? Let's just go into a signing here. Oh, wow. Okay. What was wrong with last year? I literally had like 10 million at free agency time. What what went wrong? All right. But man, we got some signings though. Jesus. George Kittle wants a big contract. Sherman wants a massive contract for one year. We're going to have to sign those guys. So we're going to bring back Sherman, Kittle, Buckner. Um, ooh, Tevin Coleman's up. He is 27 though. So we're probably going to have to find a nice backup for Brita. Tevin Coleman probably isn't going to be the guy. He can go start somewhere else. Um, and that is, oh, maybe Akilo Witherspoon might be a nice signing. He doesn't have great coverages, though. So we're just going to bring these main three guys back for now. And we'll, we'll see about the rest. All right, so no playoffs here for us, unfortunately, man. We finish 4-11. and So we're regressing currently. Not sure what's going on here. I'm hoping that we just lost some close games. Let's take a look at the year and see if we lost any close-ins. Um, what, what are we doing here? Team schedule. Trying to check that out. Uh, regular season. Okay. Um, we did lose our fair share of close games for sure. As you, I, we only got blown out about two or three times. So I, I'm okay with that. As long as we weren't getting blown out. A, a lot of our games were one score games there. So I'm happy with that. I mean, obviously not happy with making, not making the playoffs, but I can kind of see why, you know? Maybe we just lost a cl close games. Jimmy G, though, not, not a great year. 3,900 yards, 23 touchdowns, 13 interceptions, 63% completion rate. Got to cut back on that, but his sacks went up. They're at 43 now. Running the ball, we get 1,000 yards from Brita. Eight touchdowns. Cut back on those fumbles in a big way. Good to see that. Tevin Coleman, 300 yards, three touchdowns. Uh, I think it's time for Brita to take the full workload, and I think next season he's going to be in a nice spot. With that, uh, receiving here, we get 94 receptions from Goodwin, 1,000 yards, nearly 1,100 yards, 9 touchdowns, Kittle with 86, 903, Pettis 85, 806, Debo Samuel cut back on his production by a long shot from last year, only 35 receptions, 470 yards, and 4 touchdowns, I don't know what happened there, um, other than that, yeah, nothing too impressive there. Uh, sacks why ooh, our, our rookie left tackle allowed 16? Jesus, what is going on here? Defensively, we get 101 tackles from Alexander, 98 by Warner, 87 by Witherspoon. Sacks, we get 16 and a half by D Ford, 10 and a half by Buckner, 
Uh, five by Fred Warner. Five by Nick Bosa. Three and a half by Quan Alexander. Three and a half by Armstead. Thomas doing work. How did Thomas do in his new role? He had 40 tackles. Eh, 31 solo tackles. I'll take it. Interceptions. We get three by Sherbin. Two by Witherspoon. A lot of one bombs here. So, as you, I, mean, I don't know. I don't know what to think of this season. I guess we just need to improve in a big way. Offensive line for sure. And I guess we still don't know if Jimmy G's the quarterback. If, if he continues to play like that, I'm going to have to say he's not. But I'm hoping the offensive line issues are impacting his play in a big way. So, we're, we're going to have to address that this offseason. So, let's go ahead and hop right into it. Man, guys, this is one of the most stacked free agency periods I've ever seen. Straight up, it is. It, it just is. Go ahead and check out some of these names here. Got this Sean Watson. He's going to break the market with that kind of a contract. Then one offer we're going after. We're only signing one guy because we're not in a great cap situation again for some reason. We're going to go after Bakhtiari. He's a proven left tackle. Best left tackle in the league in my opinion. Uh, we're offering him a crap ton of money to come over here. Uh, and I think it would be a great fit. I really do. We get an elite left tackle if we get him. We could move our left tackle to a guard, maybe even perhaps center. Really help us out if we get this guy. I'm going to make it 107 just to get it up one more. Because I'm going to be super heated if I don't get this guy. All right, come on. You know you want to get the 107, so go ahead and uh, just get right up there. Come on. Why is it at 106? We're, we keep on upping it here. Maybe 12.9 mil will get it. There we go. We're at 107 now. Come on, back to Ari. Don't let me down. Don't let me down. Please accept this. This is huge right now. Oh, he accepts it. He accepts it, and we get the best left tackle in the game to come over here and protect Jimmy G. That should clean up things a lot for us and help us out in a big way. So while we're still here in the offseason, I am going to try to unload Goodwin here. He is starting to regress, and he's about 30 now. So I don't really see a point in keeping him. So I think we are going to try to get rid of him here. We do need a right guard to really complete our O-line. So the Falcons are interested. We'll see if they just want to straight up accept this. And they do. We probably could have got a little bit out of that. But I, I like just trading Marquise Goodwin straight up for a decent right guard. Didn't cost a whole lot either. The right guard didn't. So I'm happy with that. We are going to need receivers though. So I'm hoping we can maybe find one in the upcoming draft. We'll see though. All right, doing a quick draft recap, guys. So we didn't get a whole lot of good players here, especially late, but we, we got what we needed early on. We went after a corner here who kind of reminds me of a Sherman-type corner. He's 6'2", 200, kind of uh, almost exact Sherman's uh, ratings there, like, you know, height-wise and weight-wise. But, uh, yeah, I think he can be a Sherman guy for us. He's got 91 speed, 80 zone. Obviously, you don't want to throw him into that category yet, but... He's got hidden development, and I, I think he can end up being a star for us. And go along with Sherman Great while he's still here. Uh, we, we went after running back with our second pick uh, because we did lose Coleman and McKinnon last year. So we needed a guy that can back up Breida a bit, but I, I still think Breida is going to be our number one guy. Undoubtedly, he's going to take most of the snaps there and be a workhorse for us, but this guy's going to be there for when we need him. Nice little receiving back for us, and... Besides that, didn't get much. This draft was a little weird. It was loaded in like the defensive line and everything besides that. Receiver, offensive line, anything like that was just garbage. So I, I couldn't really go after that. So uh, yeah, not a real great draft, but we do get a cornerback, which we really did need. And our offensive line, I guess, is, is kind of built up now. So let's go ahead and hop right into year th three. We are here at year three. I'm pretty hyped. We got some X factors that I'm really hyped to show you about all on defense. So let me go ahead and show you what our offense is looking like. We picked up back Diari. Um, offensive line's looking pretty good. It, it, I have to say, it's looking really nice. So back to Yari, we have two nice tackles with McGlinchey and our free agency signing. Then uh, interiorly, we're not looking too bad. We traded for Lindstorm, lost Goodwin, but I'll, I'll take that trade considering Goodwin was regressing. Uh, Smith, we bounced him from left tackle to center, and then Tomlinson is still our left guard. Running backs, uh, we did lose Coleman and... Uh, McKessick? Yeah, I think it was. Uh, but either way, we, Matt Breedy's going to be our number one guy now. Oh, no, McKinnon it was. Jarek McKinnon, uh, he's gone too. So, yeah, Breedy is our number one guy. Garoppolo is still here. I am going to start Debo Samuel as our number one guy over Dante Pettis. Because I don't think his ratings do him justice. Because I'll go ahead and show you them here. They're, I mean, they're not great. 
but they're not bad. He, he can catch the ball, make some nice catches, and I think if we have him as our number one guy, I think he's going to get a lot of upgrade points, so I'm going to keep him there. Dante Pettis is going to stay as our number two. Rodgers is going to be our slot guy this year. He, he actually ended up having star development, which is nice. Still got Kittle at tight end. Uh, then defense, I'll show you the X-Factors. So as you can see, we got an X-Factor on DeForest Buckner and Quan Alexander. Quan Alexander has the ball hawk. Go ahead and take a look at this ability he has, though. Um, he has the lurker ability. Defenders with this ability can make jumping 100 degree interceptions while lurking in a zone in middle of the field. So that's pretty crazy right there. Then DeForest Buckner got uh, the Fear Monger ability, I believe. Yeah, he got Fear Monger. So, he, man, we're going to have some monsters on defense. Still got Nick Bosa. Defensive line's great. I'm not worried about getting pressure on quarterbacks or even our linebackers. I like where they are as well. Uh, I'm, just, I'm worried, I would say, right now about safeties on the defensive side of the ball. We need to address that quickly. But uh, cornerbacks are starting to shape up. We still got Sherman. We still have Foster, who we just drafted, who I'm hoping can be good for us. And, yeah, other than that, I would say our biggest need on defense is going to be safeties. Besides that, we have a top defense right now. We got pass rushers that can get after you. So I'm excited to see what we can do this year. I, I'm hoping we'll make the playoffs this year. I, I, I'm not going to oh, – we got to set the season goal. But, man, I feel like I've been jinxing it these last couple times. Because every time I make the – every time I push make the playoffs, we, we haven't been. So I'm hoping that we can maybe make a change. The offensive line, I'm hoping, helps in a big way. We'll see. All right, guys, I'll give you a little sneak peek here. Four and three, four and three. So not the best, but hey, it's better than that's almost as many wins as we had last year when we finished freaking, did we finish like four wins or six wins? It was one of those, but either way, we're, we're doing probably better than last year. So players are going to have to resign. couple of big guys here, and besides that, really nobody else. Um, yeah, nobody else besides uh, Dante Pettis and Fred Warner. I don't know, though. Freaking Dante Pettis wants a decent amount of money. And we are running low on cap. And I'm not, I'm not a fan of that deal, but we're just not going to have receivers if we don't go out. I don't know. Probably not for sure Pettis, but we'll, we'll see what kind of a year he puts up. And Fred Warner, 100% has to come back, but we'll see about Pettis. Jesus, no playoffs again. Three straight years with no playoffs. We're 8-7-1. At least we're improving. It, I mean, not by a whole lot, though. We, we just haven't improved. I don't know if it's our division or what. Let's go ahead and check out some of the upgrades, I guess. Um, I'm kind of bummed out about that. So, Devo Samuel didn't do great as a number one receiver, it looks like. Or maybe, I don't know. I'm wondering what the problem is. Nick Bosa has three upgrade points. Uh, four, oh, superstar. Okay, so we have a superstar corner here to go along with Sherman. So, that should be nice. Man, look at that. Sherman's still upgrading. He's like 32 now. I'll take it. Um, go ahead and check out the stats here. Man, Jimmy G, I don't know. Is it up to him or what? We finished 19th in offensive yards, 10th in defensive. That's to be expected. I don't know. I don't know if Jimmy G's the answer right now. 3,900 yards, 27 touchdowns, 11 interceptions, 65% completion rate. That's just not great stats. Running the ball, McKinnon has 1,000 yards, 6 touchdowns. Mm, okay. Offensively, we're just not doing great here. Debo Samuel, 80 receptions, 900 yards, 3 touchdowns. I'll take that. That's a decent year from Debo. Pettis here, 77 receptions. All 7s for him. 700 yards, 6 touchdowns, 7,705 for Kittle. Rodgers did good from the slot. So, I, okay, this is how I'm looking at it here. As our receivers, I like Rodgers and I like Samuel. We just need an elite guy, and I, I don't think Pettis is that. So I don't think we are going to re-sign Dante Pettis. We might actually attempt to trade for an elite receiver. We'll see. Try to get Jimmy G and an elite guy out there. Um, yeah, just not great in the offensive department. Sack. Okay, how does our left tackle allow 13 sacks? Literally, the I, I can't do anything else. Best left tackle in the game. So I, I don't get that. 119 tackles by Warner, 98 by ooh, our corner. Take that too. 95 by Quan Alexander, 77 by Sherman. Sacks, we're going to get 11.5 from Buckner. 
Ten and a half from Armstead. Ooh, nasty work by the defensive tackles. Seven and a half by Ford. Five and a half by Bosa. Bosa hasn't really came out with a great year yet. That's that's kind of disappointing. Interceptions. We get two by Warner. Two by DJ Reed. Two by Rudy Foster. The corner we drafted. Two by Sherman. Couple of one bombs here. So I really like where our defense is. I just don't like where our offense is currently. We're going to have to make a move heading into year four here. All right, we're here in free agency. Not going to lie, this rebuild has been way tougher than I thought it was going to be in the first place, but we'll go ahead and check it out here. So the only player I'm going to be able to offer a contract to is going to be AB. Like I said, we need an elite receiver. I think that's actually one of the only things we're missing. So we'll see if he accepts it here. I'm hoping he does. Come on, please, AB. All right, he accepts it. So we add AB to the squad. He's going to have an X factor as well. So I'm feeling pretty good about that. Our receiving core isn't the best, but now that we add AB, uh, I, I think it's going to make it a lot better and give Jimmy G probably some more decent numbers. Let's go ahead and do a draft recap too. All right, guys, draft recap. We actually got a couple people that are going to start in the safety department. We'll go after a free safety, Damian Richardson, who ended up being a eh, not a great, not a good safety. 68 overall, but he's better than what we have. Then we get a decent, strong safety. He's actually 20th in true talent, uh, 70 overall. Good speed. Uh, you know, just I think why his uh, stuff is so low is that play recognition. We need to get that up ASAP. 57 is not good. We addressed quarterback. We had to go after one. I'm not going to start him just yet. I'm going to give Jimmy G a chance. But by midseason, if Jimmy G isn't playing well, I think we're going to have to throw him in there. Because we're going to give Jimmy G a chance with AB. And if he's still not putting up numbers at midseason, I think it's going to be time to make the switch. But for right now, he's going to be sitting behind AB. We draft a scrambler, 89 speed. Decent accuracy is not bad, so it wouldn't be a horrible thing if we have to throw him in there. But that's going to be worst case scenario if Jimmy G just like falls off the rails and we're like 0-8 at midseason. Then that's when I'm going to hop in and do that. But that's going to do it for the draft recap. Let's go ahead and hop right into year four. All right, guys, I'm feeling pretty good about our team here. I'm really am. I, uh, we got Jimmy G, and we have a quarterback in the weights. If you know, like I said, Jimmy G doesn't have a great year. Matt Breed is still here. Offensive line's looking nice. Tight end's pretty good. Wide receivers are looking nice finally. A Antonio Brown already has two upgrade points. Um, so we're going to have Debo Samuel playing number two. And Rodgers playing number three and our slot guy. He can really make some tough crashes. Look at this guy's stats here. Huge red zone threat most likely. 87 speed, but he's got great catch and traffic. Really good catch and traffic. So I think he's going to be a nice player for us this year defensively. We got another X Factor in our cornerback here. Our second year corner earned his X Factor uh, after winning Defensive Rookie of the Year. I'll show you guys. So you go to his progression history and uh, right there. So he won Defensive Rookie of the Year in the Super Bowl week and won an X Factor, which is really good. His ability is reinforcement. Not the best for a corner, right? Uh, increases their chance of defeating run blocks, tackling runner, and disrupting catches. So I'm not sure if disrupting catches is going to mean like him in coverage. Hopefully it does. That would that would be good because now we have two X-Factor corners. I activated their ability and DeForest Buckner's. I, I took off Quan Alexander because I really wanted to see what would happen if we have two X-Factor corners. Uh, defensive line is the same. Can't seem to find a safety to save my life here. But well, hopefully these guys can hold up. Linebackers are the same as well. Everything on defense is top tier except safeties. That's the only thing we're missing here. Even offense is starting to get up there. We're, we're kind of in a rough spot offensively because it's not like we can make too many moves right now. For some reason, Matt Breida just isn't upgrading. Not sure why that is. Um, but yeah, I, I, we're going to have to see here. What Jimmy G can do this year. That is going to do it for year four at the beginning. Let's go ahead and see what we're looking like at the midseason. And we might make a quarterback change if it's not looking good. Well, we're here at midseason. We're sitting at 4-3-1. and one. Man, I don't know. Do we start the other quarterback? First of all, let's see Jimmy G's stat. Okay. No, we can't take him out. He's 2,200 yards. That's the most in the league. How was our defense last? 
Man, I don't get this stuff. Our defense is last. How did you see our defense? Okay, I guess it's last. I guess it's last. Uh, we're gonna have to check out some of the players we're gonna have to resign here. Quan Alexander gotta bring him back. Nick Bosa's coming back. Uh, Jimmy G's gotta come back here. Wow, Jimmy G's contract's already up. All right. Um, so there's a lot of our money. Jimmy G, Nick Bosa, and Quan Alexander. We gotta bring all of them back. Finally, we end up getting a buy here, guys. Jesus, we didn't make the playoffs for three straight years there. That was tough. What did we finish here? We finished 12, three and one. All right. That ain't a bad record at all. And we take the division. I'm glad. Rams stay out of the playoffs. Seattle too, because they, they could have took us out. Those definitely are some teams that I would be worried about if I had to face them. Okay. I guess not. We are going to be facing Seattle. Gosh. I don't know. Okay. Probably jinxed myself there. Probably did. Probably jinxed myself. So we finished second in offensive yards. Oh, okay. Looked like all he needed was a receiver. Look at his stats. 4,400 yards, 42 touchdowns, 7 interceptions, 72% completion rate. Looks like getting, you know, getting him a receiver plus getting him a little quarterback competition behind him really lit him a fire under him. Because Jimmy G has a great year running the ball. Can't really get a great running back here. Matt Breida, almost only about 1,000 yards, 11 touchdowns, one fumble. Jennings, though, he had about 400 yards, six touchdowns as the backup. Receiving here, I'm curious what happened here. 107 receptions for AB, 1,200 yards, 12 touchdowns. Kittle, 84, 813. Debo Samuel, 86 receptions, 807 touchdowns. I'll take that. Uh... Kendrick Rogers from the slot, 56, 703. Not bad. Uh, blocking here. Hopefully we did a little better. All right, we definitely did better in the blocking department. Our offensive line actually held up. Then 112 tackles by Warner, 85 by Alexander, 82 by Austin. Sacks, we get 16 and a half from Buckner, 8 by Ford, 6 and a half by Bosa, 4 by Warner, 4 by Armstead. Good sack production there. Really impressive for Buckner. Two picks by Warner, two by Austin, two by Sherman, two by Rudy Foster. That's good to see. A couple of one bombs here. All right. We, we played good all in all here. Played good offensively and defensively. Second in offensive yards and 10th in defensive yards. That's pretty impressive. Yearly award. Ooh, Jimmy G takes the MVP. I'll take that. So after a couple of down years for Jimmy G, we get him a little help outside. Getting an A-B, and man, he has a career year here. And he wins the MVP. That's for, ooh, two of us playing for the Raiders? Okay. Uh, but I'm, I'm pretty happy about that. That's one of the first times I've actually won MVP in Madden 20. I'm hyped about it. I'm hyped. Now, we're going to be taking on Seattle. Uh, probably won't play the moments. I'm just going to see if my team can get the W here. I'm hoping they can. I really am hoping they can. All right, guys, I'm hyped about it. We're in the playoffs finally, year four. I can't believe it took us this long to make them, but, you know, we'll see if we can make the most of them. Of course we got to play Seattle, though. It's probably going to be a dogfight, though. The Seattle and the 49ers always have tough games when they play in uh, the division. Ooh, we take the lead. I'll take it. Seattle ties it. We take the lead again. Oh, man, it's a dogfight right now. It's a freaking dogfight. We tie it up. Come on. Drive down, Jimmy. Oh. Oh, and Seattle scores a on touchdown. Such so a close hope, game, so though. Such a close game. On Can't believe we're going to walk out of there with a W. I mean, an L. Are you kidding, though? Really is because it's so much Dang. All of that, goal. and we lose our first playoff game. Are you freaking game kidding? Well... Man, Russell Wilson had an 81% completion rate. What, what about our corners? What about our defensive line? Where? Okay. Okay, that sucks. That really sucks. All right, last free agency period here. We're going to go out and spend literally all of our money. We have a whopping zero left in the cap. Uh, we're going to go after Mike Hilton and really try to get a slot cornerback. So our cornerback core is really nice, which I think would help us out. And we're also going to go after... Uh, Chauncey Gardner here. We need a free safety. Definitely do. I think safety is holding us back. 
and it, it's not a huge upgrade but it's a decent upgrade from what we have as you see we only have a 72 overall safety i think what's hurt us the most is rebuild though is just the amount of cap we haven't had i thought we would have a decent amount of cap with the 49ers and we just haven't okay and mike hilton rejects our offer here so that's gonna hurt us a little bit we're, we're gonna definitely have wanted him because that would have really made us have a nice secondary but you know mike hilton had other plans but the safety does accept it here so let's go ahead and do a quick draft recap. I don't know if we're going to get anybody that's going to start. Our team's pretty built up right now. But you never know what's going to happen. Alright, doing a draft recap. Not anything special here. We didn't really get any great picks. Um, we got a slot corner that might start for us. I tried to go after a safety and address that. Just didn't really get anybody great there. But we got a slot cornerback that probably will start. Considering we don't have a number 3 cornerback that's any good. And I know he only has a 69 overall. But... He has really nice agility, uh, nice catching actually, so he might be a decent slot guy. He doesn't have great press at all. He actually has some of the worst press I've ever seen for a corner, but he has, he has real nice agility, and we'll see if uh, he plays good in the slot. But yeah, not a successful draft really, but we don't have a whole lot of positions to fill, so I didn't really have something to go out that we needed. We, we kind of have playmakers at all of our positions currently. So that is going to do it for the draft. Let's go ahead and hop right into year five. Right, so one last look at the team here. We know what time it is. I actually haven't gotten to this point at all in any of my Madden 20 rebuilds. We actually got all Super Bowl W's before year five. So this is the first time we're in year five. We'll see what happens here. Go ahead and take one final look at the roster that we've built. Jimmy G got superstar development. That might help out. Um... Matt, Bre I'm, I'm disappointed. Matt Breida just has an upgrade at all. And I'm not sure why because we had him when he was really young. He's 28 now, but we, we had him pretty young. And I, I'm wondering why he didn't upgrade ever. Except maybe one point. But uh, Rodgers finally overthrew Debo to take that number two spot. Debo just hasn't upgraded either. Another one of those players that just really slow upgrading process. So he's going to be our number three guy this year. AB still here. Offensive line is the same. We still got the tight end here, George Kittle, with the X Factor. Defensively, we're still looking really good. Uh, we finally addressed free safety one after one. Uh, we still do have a, a decent strong safety. That's in his second year, I believe, Austin. Uh, nice linebacking core with Alexander, Warner, and Thomas. Really nice cornerback core with Sherman and Foster here, both X Factor guys. Cohen is going to be playing the slot for us. And the defensive line has been nasty all rebuild. It really has. We've had D Ford, Buckner, Bosa, Armstead. They've all gotten some substantial sacks through the rebuild. So I'm pretty happy with how they've played. I knew our front seven was going to be pretty nice. Uh, it, I think our secondary was holding us back for a while. We built that up. Don't see any problems with our defense really. And I don't really see any with our offense. Maybe Jimmy G or Matt Breida. I guess we haven't had an elite running back yet. I, I just thought Matt Breida was going to be that guy. Maybe I made a mistake signing him long term. But uh, that's going to do it, guys. That is the last preview of the roster in year five. I'm not going to check back at midseason because we don't need to re-sign anybody. It is the fifth and final year. So see if we make the playoffs. We'll just simulate straight to them. All right, guys. Simulating these last few weeks here. Let's see it. Come on. Come on. Don't do me dirty, Madden. Don't do me Oh, they did me dirty. They have us going six and ten. How? We we just we I don't get it. We're coming off like a what was it twelve three in one year, and then the next year we don't even make the playoffs. Did did we finish dead last in defense? I think we may have. Um. No. Okay, we finished about middle of the pack in defense. Really think we should have finished top in that, but. You know what, let's go ahead and check out the stats. Jimmy G throws for a bunch of yards, just can't get the job done. Can't get it done. Matt Breida disappoints. I guess he averaged 4.2 yards a carry. We needed to run it a bit more. Wow, 2,000 yard receivers? How did we not make the playoffs? Nearly a 1,000 yard tight end. I don't get it. I don't. Check out, see who had any production in the sacks department. Great production. What happened? Did we? I don't get it. I don't. Uh, that's really unfortunate. I was hoping we'd make the playoffs. I would have hopped in, played the moments with the fifth year here. 
can't get it done that is going to be the first rebuild i do lose um that's tough that's a really that's a hard one to lose right there we, we were building up our team just nothing happened those first three years i think we would have been in a way better spot how we made the playoffs those first three years didn't just had losing seasons had one good season that went right back to a losing season i don't know what's going on but you know what it, it was still fun it was still fun we, we seen what jimmy g could do we got him ab got him a target to throw to still couldn't get it done had a great year won mvp then you know what just things went downhill things went down freaking hill but that is gonna do it for this rebuild guys if you guys did enjoy it please make sure you hit that sub button that is always greatly appreciated we're on the road to a thousand subscribers and i really do appreciate the support lately guys and make sure you leave a suggestion of who you want to see next and i'll see you guys next time peace out